Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. I'm here with Brian, and we are talking about how to do a proper refrigerant leak search. Brian, tell me what we got going on here. Yeah, okay. We've got just a small little Daikin mini split we're going to use for this demonstration. This is not a system that's currently in service, but it's a nice little demo model for us to use. So we're going to talk about kind of the methods and techniques um, that I like to use in the field when I'm doing a leak search. So the first thing I'd do if I walked up on a unit, obviously if I suspected it might be low on refrigerant, I'm going to connect my refrigerant gauges to see is it ha does it have any refrigerant left in it? Is it completely out of refrigerant? Um, so we'll start off and say we walk up to it, put the gauges, there's no gas in it whatsoever. So what I would do first is I'd add some nitrogen, maybe probably only about 50 PSI or so, because what I want to see if it's out of gas completely, more than likely that's a substantial leak and you're probably going to be able to find it by using tools that you don't even have in your tool bag, which would be your ears and your eyes. You're going to put 50 PSI on there and immediately if you hear an audible uh, sound of nitrogen leaking out of the system, it's going to be pretty close, easy to get close to it where it is. And then at that point, once I had a general idea of what area the leak was coming from, I'd use my cow blue solution here to spray it down and I'd start looking for bubbles forming on the copper. Usually a good place to look is on the U-bends on the ends of each one of these indoor coils. That's a great place to start looking for leaks as well as on the condenser coil to look for the U-bends. If I'm not finding it there, then I'm going to open up the compressor cabinet and I'm going to start spraying that piping down, spraying the compressor down, looking for leaking fittings. Like you mentioned earlier, John, a Schrader core is, you know, notorious for being the problem. Um, and that's where your eyes can come in handy is looking for visual signs of oil. There's oil in our refrigerant, so as we have a refrigerant leak, the gas is leaking out with the oil. Oil loves for dirt to attract to it and stick to it. So if I walk up and I see a real dirty spot on this coil, just in one spot, or maybe around my Schrader fittings, that's a great indication. That's where I'm gonna start looking. That may be where the leak is. Yeah. Typically, maybe like you'll see like a V shape from it where the yep. where the leak's coming out and the oil's spreading. Yep. And it creates a, a dark a inverted. That's exactly v. right. Yep. Spreads and runs down, and then the dirt just loves to cling to mm -hmm. that spot. So it's a really good visual, especially when you get the bigger equipment. You could just pull one panel and usually get a good idea where the leak's coming from. So main culprits usually evaporator coils around the tube sheets, condenser coils around the tube sheets. If I'm not seeing it there, I'm gonna start looking around my compressor. But say we come up to the system and it's not out of gas. Maybe it's been running and every six months somebody comes out and puts a pound or two of gas in it. So we're going to try to find the leak that way. In that case, we would, uh, we'd hooked our gauges up just to verify the refrigerant in it. If it's got enough gas to start the system, that's great. But we really don't want it running while we're doing this. You want everything to be turned off. Go ahead and kill your disconnect because you may be opening panels with high voltage in them. Just shut everything down once you verify there's refrigerant in it. And then we're gonna start using an electronic leak detector to get us close to where we need to be. Um, this Backrack H10 is what I like to use. It's got several settings on it, small, medium, and large for your leak search. I usually like to turn it on to large and that's gonna get me close. But now it could, the leak could be over here and it's gonna start ringing out when I get this close to it because it's looking for a large leak, which what it does is it increases the air pump speed on this so it's bringing in more volume of air and picking that refrigerant up. So once I get close and I hear it start ringing, probably gonna switch it to medium. That'll let me get a little closer and then go to small. And that's gonna get me really close to where it might be, you know, whether it be over here, it's gonna be ringing off as I'm getting really close. And then in that case, I would go back to my spray bottle and try to see it. I'll say this, you'll hear a lot of guys say, oh, that leaks in the coil, get a new coil coils under warranty, I would absolutely get a new coil. They're tough to fix that way. Mm -hmm. It's not impossible, but sometimes when you figure the labor cost into doing something like that, opposed to a purchase of a new coil, it may be better for the customer to purchase a new coil, but it can be done. If I were to pick one up, there's copper tubes running under these fins. I take my screwdriver and slowly start spreading these fins out. Still makes a mess. It can be fixed. Um, it's tough though, but you can do it, but it, you're going to make, make a mess of that coil pretty much. So if it's in the coil, unless they just have to have it up and running, a lot of times it's better to change that coil out. It's tough, but sometimes it's obsolete, you, long shipping delays, customers got it happen up and running. You can do it. You have to just spread this out, expose that copper, use your spray bowl, find exactly where it's leaking on there. 
And then you want to spread it out a little further because after you pull your gas and you got your torches on it, you don't want to really melt this aluminum. It can kind of mess with your braze when you so just spread that out far enough and definitely let your customer know what you're about to do before you chop a yeah. big hole in the coil. But uh, it can all be fixed. Um, electronics going to get you there once you get close. Then you need to start spraying your solution on it, find exactly where the leak is. And that time, now we got to recover the gas out. So this gets missed a lot of times. Okay, I've got a refrigerant leak that's leaking gas out into the atmosphere. I put my recovery machine on, I start pulling that refrigerant out of the system, but once I get below atmosphere, now I'm pulling air in there that's mm -hmm. going in the refrigerant I just covered. So if it's a big system that's got a lot of gas in it, maybe recover it down to five PSI or so, and don't try to get any more in your tank because you're not gonna be able to reuse it because it'll have non-condensables in it. Um, if it's a small system, just pull it all out and charge it with new gas. Yeah. Ultimately, the best thing to do would be to charge it with new gas, especially when you get into blended refrigerants that may fracture. If you lose too much gas, you need to change it anyway. So if it's got a leak any way possible, I'd put new gas in it every time if I could. Yeah. But you know, it all really is what the customer wants to do. Yeah, good recommendation. Hey, Brian, tell me, uh, do you have a process that you recommend from maybe starting the Schrader valve or starting the line set or evaporator condenser how would you That's where, a great where point. would you start what you just said the schrader because i've got to take that cap off to put my gauges on so i'm going to take that cap off and it's either going to have liquid refrigerant spraying out of the schrader or maybe just squirt a little dab on here and see if it starts bubbling and if it's been a very slow leak more than likely you just found it you can tighten that schrader core and maybe stop that leak but what i would do is if it's if it's leaking already, you're just putting a Band-Aid on it, it's going to leak again more than likely. They sell tools where you can change that Schrader cool without recovering the refrigerant in it. And you don't lose any refrigerant out of the system, you don't have to recover it, but you can replace the Schrader core. So if you find the leak there, replace that Schrader core. System like this, you're probably still going to want to weigh the gas out, put the right charge back in it. But that's for sure where I always start is where I'm going to hook my gauges up. From there, since I'm at the outdoor unit already hooking my gauges up, I'm gonna do a quick visual around the outdoor unit, look for any leaks mm -hmm. there. Might even go ahead if my truck's close by, get my sniffer out, do a quick once over on the condenser. But if it's not the Schrader, a lot of times it's the indoor unit. So then I would go ahead and go inside. If I can expose the drain line and open up to get in that drain pan, I'd put my sniffer down in that pan. And if it starts ringing out, I know for sure somewhere the leak is in my evaporator coil. Now I need to start adjusting my sniffer mm -hmm. to get to pinpoint where the leak is. Yeah. Yeah. But I always go, since I got to start by putting my gauges on, I'll go ahead and start there. Once I've kind of ruled that out in my mind, then I'll jump inside. If I don't pick it up here and I don't pick it up here, now I've got a line set that connects these two units. Good chance it's in that line set. And that can, that can be challenging because if it's insulated, if it's above ceiling, you're going to have to start stripping insulation back. Behind drywall behind drywall yeah. and it's more than likely going to be in a brace fitting that's leaked or possibly sometimes the, the copper can stress and crack from expansion and contraction but those those are pretty tough to find when it's mm -hmm. insulated line because you might stick it in there and it could ring out but the leak could be 20 feet down because the insulation is saturated with refrigerant oil yeah so those are tough ones so i start here rule out the easy stuff first start here then go inside and if i still haven't found it then I'm gonna have to start looking uh, above or just chasing out the line set to try to find it there. Hey, t tell me this, I always see Schrader core, uh, the caps off the Schrader, the, the Schrader valve. Mm -hmm. um, talk about putting the caps back on, maybe checking that O-ring. Yep. T talk about that process. A so bit. it's a good point. So the Schrader is really what's keeping it from leaking. But mm -hmm. if that Schrader does start leaking, if you've got your cap secured down there tight, it's not going to leak the gas out. Now, when mm -hmm. you take it off, take your gauges off, you'll see it. But if they've got the O-ring in their cap tight, it's a good solid O-ring, and they got the cap screwed down there tight, that Schrader can leak all day, but you're not going to lose your charge. Yeah. It's a good point. If you come up on one and the Schraders are missing, you're doing, I'm sorry, the Schrader caps, maybe I'm just doing PMs. Very good practice. The caps are cheap. Keep a box on your trucks mm -hmm. and put them back on there. It might not be leaking today, but the, they're notorious for leaking. They, they hold pressure back and just like the car tire, it's got a Schrader in it. They leak too, you know, it's, it happens. That's a good point. All right, anything else? Yeah, just make sure your tools are in good shape before you get started. Uh, make sure we, all our hoses are good. We don't have any leaks there. All the rubber gaskets are good in them. 
We got a leak detector we're confident in that we know works. The worst thing you can do is spend four hours chasing something around because your tool is not working. So just make sure you got good working equipment before you get started and then you know, start at A to Z, man, and work your way back until you find it. All right, and there you have it. Brian, always good to be with you. Um, hey, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and come back and check us out again. <laughs>